welcome to Atop the House of Love, the home of good comics. Now, I hadn't planned this to be backwards, but I received this patron request, and I had already lined up the Venom movie review for later in the season, so I've bumped it up the queue, and we'll be taking a look at it next week. And if you want to request a review, it's my $3 a month tier on Patreon. About two quid in sterling. Sign up at the link below. Why am I telling you this? Well, you'll figure it out when I introduce today's subject, Venom, the End. Released in January 2020, Venom the End is exactly what it says on the cover, the final Venom story of them all. Beginning in the present day, and spanning to the eventual end of organic life in the universe, it's a wild ride as the self-titled Lethal Protector becomes the final protector of organic life itself. It's a sensational, symbiotic, trillion-year adventure. But is it worthy of my house of love? Well, let's dig into Venom the End and find out. Roll titles! begin with a dramatic two-page spread of the final battle between organic and mechanical life. But how did we get here? The story of the great war between biological and mechanical life begins right here in the present day with Venom. Now, I'm not going to go into the deep lore about what Klintar symbiotes are and how they came to be. All you really need to know is that to remain anchored to this universe, they need a biological host. Venom's main squeeze, if you will, was one Edward Eddie Brock. And for half of an entire millennium, the two were inseparable. Not that Eddie ever asked for five whole centuries of extended lifespan, and the aging process still took its toll. The Venom symbiote had to replace all of Eddie's organs, and even tried to scaffold his brain as it failed all of which proved ultimately futile, and only ended up postponing the inevitable. And so, this symbiote bid farewell to Eddie Brock, only to face a new nightmare. War against the machines. You see, at least according to this comic, after the Kree got their backsides handed to them in yet another war, they finally unleashed all the checks and balances that stop their supreme intelligence from actually fulfilling the promise of its name. This led to retaliatory AI weaponry being developed and deployed across the galaxy, leading to an artificial superintelligence, or ASI for short, arms race. Which for some reason included a digitally encoded engram of Tony Stark, or Starkware as we'll come to know it, because heaven forfend that the universe ever be left without a Tony Stark. Though for his part, Starkware did try and preserve some other human brain engrams, including Eddie Brock himself. Venom, however, preferred a more physical approach. Using the DNA code of long-dead mutants such as Multiple Man, Elixir and Storm among others, because apparently that's possible, Venom set about growing an entirely new strain of humanity to act as hosts for exponentially multiplied clones of themselves, that our protagonists might take the fight to the ASI and finally rid us of these tin pot blighters once and for all. And so these biologically selected and enhanced neo humans were drafted into a war against the Starkware, as virtual parlay between Venom and Cybertony slammed straight into a brick wall with two words from our symbiote. 
<laughs> Charming! Still, refreshingly direct, though. And so, Venom chose violence, as the kids say, and went to war with ever quicker thinking and reacting machines. And as ASI clock speeds rose, Venom used super speeds to DNA to try to keep up, which only accelerated the demise of the human hosts. In desperation, Venom used the DNA of time-travelling mutants to go back and try to stop ASI before it started, and to preserve all forms of biological life, but to no avail. It seemed that artificial superintelligence was fated to happen, and that the battle to preserve biological life was a losing one. Cheerful, eh? And with the death of Venom's final nameless host, the last remaining symbiote in the universe literally tears himself inside out, becoming an entirely new universe in the process. And the Godmind swore not to interfere with this greatest nature preserve in all of creation, the Venomverse. Hm, <laughs> generous of the May folks. But anyway, with these words, I give you Venom, the end. This comic is dry and depressing, and I really can't put this one into my house of love. It doesn't strike me as a particularly memorable tale, as the last stand of a lethal protector. Perhaps the dryness of the tale is due to the narrator, who is revealed to be the very intelligence that Venom is fruitlessly fighting against, an emotionless god mind who is dedicated to turning the universe into a single ultra-computer so that they can use reality-warping mathematics to recreate the universe they destroyed just to watch the process start itself over again. On the plus side, though, Jeffrey Cruz's art is at least functional and easy on the eye, even as it depicts Venom's notoriously unruly tongue in even wilder contortions. And the Cyber Stark does at least bear a resemblance to the Tony Stark that we've all come to know. But I think that the problem here is that the story in this one-shot is both rushed and undernourished. There is a trillion-year war against the machines that Venom has no hope of winning, as a quinquavigintillion generations of machine intelligence, which can battle at relativistic speeds, clearly outmatch the forces that this meat gardener brings to bear, even enhanced with mutant abilities far beyond anything that the modern age has seen. And yet, all of this, the battles, the human drama, it's all skipped over because we've only got 28 pages to tell of how the god minds eradicated bio-life from the universe. But even if it does seem rushed, I don't know that the premise would have stood up to more than two issues, as the last desperate stand of an obstinate symbiote that takes it upon themselves to protect the last vestiges of organic life from the insectile swarm of artificial superintelligence collecting the whole of living creation such as it was, and storing it within themselves, would perhaps stretch to a humorous interlude or two, but scant any more. Ultimately though, Venom the End does show the symbiote's noble side in a doomed quest to save all life, and when faced with the stark truth of it all, they instead become all life, sacrificing themselves to let life blossom anew. So thanks for watching, and join me next week as we go all the way back to the beginning, at least in cinematic form, with Venom the Movie. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you better days and better comics. So long, folks!
Hey folks, this is Funky again. If you like the video, you know where that button is. And why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? Perhaps you can drop by my Discord chat. Or if you're feeling extra awesome, sign up for my crowdfunding. All of which is linked below. But if not, that's okay too. And thanks again for watching. So long!